Hey guys, this is BBB Production and this is a video tutorial on a program called Power ISO. Power ISO is a program that allows you to handle ISO format files, DA format files, and also bin files. Uh, it's a great program and I'm going to teach you all I know about it and where to get it and yeah. Okay, first of all, I just want to say this program does cost money, so if you're not willing to buy it, then I guess you can't use it unless you have other methods of getting the program. Um, to search for it, just go to Google and type in Power ISO. Click on the first link, and you will be at PowerISO.com. It costs $30 if you want to buy it, or you can download it and try the trial version of it. Um, on the website it will tell you the main features so if you want to look at that and the system requirements it is compatible with Windows 98 2000 XP and it is also Vista compatible you only need a 10 megabyte hard disk space and I'm sure pretty much everyone has that now and Intel Pentium 166 megahertz or above the link to the website will be on the right hand side of the video in the video description All right. For this demonstration, because I'm basically just going to show you guys how to use it, I'm going to make an ISO um, file. Like I said, it can handle um, a few different types of files. Um, the ones I know for sure that it can handle, again, are ISO, which means standard ISO images, CDR Win images, which is bin, and Direct Access Archive, which is dot .files. Um, for this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you only ISO files, though. Alright, uh, first of all, I'm going to show you how to create an ISO file using Power ISO. There are many other programs, um, like Magic ISO, that deal with the ISO format files and stuff, but my personal favorite is Power ISO. So, um, to make one, you have to put files inside here so that you can make the ISO file uh, you can either take the files that you want I'm going to take a video clip and I am just going to drag it into here it will tell me the size it's 4.5 megabytes or 4.6 and that is all I'm going to put in here if you don't know what ISO um, files are used for, they're basically uh, mainly used when you copy something like a um, like a game or something. If you copy it and make a backup copies of your game in case they get broken or something, you usually do ISO file because it's a direct image of that disk. So it's pretty much just copying it, but you're just taking an image of the disk of whatever's on there. If you want to learn out, learn more about what ISO files are, just Google .iso and learn what they're used for. There's so many things. I it take me a long time explaining to you what they're used for. So just Google it. Uh, I have my file in here. It's video clip. It's just pretty much the program I'm using right now. I just made a short video clip and then I'm gonna go to file save as and then I'm gonna make sure it's in ISO format and then I'm gonna name it video clip and when you're renaming it make sure not to interfere with the dot ISO otherwise it won't be an ISO file okay then I'm gonna click save and it's gonna be on my desktop and here it is right here right I am going to exit out of power ISO and you can actually just double click on your ISO file and if power ISO is assigned to ISO files it will open power ISO to assign it you can just right click go down to property um, click the change icon it says it opens with power ISO but uh, you can just select the program you want and then click apply so every time you 
click on the ISO files, it will open Power ISO. Anyways, when I opened it, it had the video clip in there that I uh, put in the file earlier. So it's right there every time I open it. Um, so yeah, that is pretty much how you make it. Now I'm explaining some of the features of Power ISO. On the top, there's some tabs. The new is basically when you click that, it just restarts fresh, so you don't have anything in here. New image file. Um, open. You can open projects. So open that project. Uh, save. When you change something, you can just click save, and it'll save it to the file. Add. You can add files that you want to the ISO file. Extract. You can extract what's in here to other folders. So you can extract it. the files are in here to any folder you want on your computer. All files or the files you want to select. Um, delete. Click delete. And delete the files that are inside. Uh, copy. Just copy a disk. These are pretty much just burning copying tools. Like this will copy a, a disk that you have in your burning drive. This will compress the files and then the burn option I want to show you. If you click that, um, if you have like a project going, like I have my file right here, it will automatically think that you want to burn that. So it has that selected. Uh, if you don't want to burn this project, you can select what one you want by clicking this button and searching for it. Anyways, it tells you the size you can select the burning drive you're going to use and then the media type um, I have it on audio detect because it detects what I have in my burning drive automatically but you can select CD or DVD if you want burning speed I usually have maximum but if you're um, burning a ISO file that's like a program and you want to make sure that it works right I recommend a slightly slower speed Right, uh, and then you just go down and click burn, and then it will burn it. Um, doesn't really take that long, depends on the burning drive you have mainly, but yeah. You can also erase this if they're re um, rewritable, so it has that function also. Alright, uh, and then mount, you can mount it, and the help button. Alright, uh, and then. If the image is bootable, which means like when you restart your computer, if you have like Windows XP or something, that's usually bootable in some cases. So you can wipe your hard drive clean and boot from it to restart. Fresh. That's pretty much what bootable means, but this image is non-bootable. Um, it shows you the size. And yeah. So Power ISO is a very good program. It's very useful if you are handling with or if you handle ISO files or DA or bin files. Um, if you use those a lot, again it's very useful. So, you know. Uh, thank you for watching and make sure to subscribe to my YouTube and rate this video.